life right. Cut the skin out, precept you like a knife. The one to die in the streets, I was blind, now I see. The physicians of righteousness. The one to die in the streets, I was blind, now I see. The physicians of righteousness. We talked about this uh, Tuesday night. 23 W. Luke. Luke. Chapter 23. Verse 39. Just going back to the proper judgment. This is the book of Luke. Chapter 23 and verse 49. 39. 39. Mm -hmm. And one... Of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. So what's going on is, right, Christ is on the cross. Right? There's two guys up there with him. He's pretty much cussing Christ out, right? I'm like, if you, if you are what you say you is, then why don't you just get us off the cross then? Come on. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Doest not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Mm -hmm. And we indeed justly. We indeed justly. So what this brother understood is that he was on that cross justly. His punishment that he received was just. And he was able to accept that. Come on. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. Mm -hmm. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Mm -hmm. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Stop. So, going back to the judgment that happens, is that if we're able to clap, accept what we have done, what will the Lord say? Come on. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. You got to understand that thing. If you're able to be accountable for your own action like this man was that was literally on the cross, he was able to be accountable for his actions and say, you know what, Lord, don't forget me. You know what I'm saying? He'll still make it in. But a lot of times what will happen when we're going through these judgments is that we'll just say, F it. Lord, forget me. Forget you. You know what I'm saying? Forget everybody. I'm done. But not this guy. He was able to say, you know what? I trust you. Come on, let's start over. Let's read it again. 39. Verse 39. Uh -huh. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, uh -huh. saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Uh -huh. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Doest not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Stop. Let's go back. Go to Jeremiah. We're going to come right back to this. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, mm -hmm. that none doeth return from his wickedness. So these Pharisees and priests and prophets that was living during that time that Christ was living, it was unjust. Right? So just because that dude was on the cross at that point don't mean he was guilty of that exact thing. What he was saying when he said, we receive our just reward, he's saying, guess what? I've been a sinful man my whole life. He's saying, whatever I get from the, the, the ripple effect that I'm getting from my sins is this, then I, I accept it. That's what he was able to say. Read that again. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery. So the prophets, the teachers, the Pharisees that was living at that time and, and teaching and casting people to death on the cross, they was doing what? They commit adultery. They was committing adultery. Go ahead. And walk in lies. They was walking in lies. Go ahead. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers mm -hmm. that none do have returned from his wickedness. But, okay, go ahead. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Okay, go back to Luke 23. So the first thing you want to remember, right, when you're looking at this specific instance, 
What did Christ do to deserve to be put on the cross? He didn't do nothing. So again, not saying that those dudes was completely sinless. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that the Pharisees at that time and the judges that was putting people on the cross, they were unjust judges. Read that again. We had Luke 23 and 39. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 39. Mm -hmm. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Mm -hmm. But the other answering rebuked him. The other answer would rebuke him. So there's another guy up there, right, that wasn't yelling at Christ. He rebuked, he said, You know what, bro, you off. Come on. Saying, Doest not thou fear God? Now, why would he say that? Do you not fear God? What does that mean? This man had been reading the scriptures. He was able to verify that this is somebody that is walking in lockstep with God. Come on. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation, mm -hmm. and we indeed justly. So he said, we just, we deserve to be up here. Go ahead. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. Of our deeds. Go ahead. But this man have done nothing amiss. Now he was able to know that, guess what? Christ didn't do nothing. How, how would he know that? Except he had been following Christ. There's no way for him to know that. But to, in Christianity, they make it like, oh, that dude was just up there on the cross next to him. They'd been stealing all day. He showed up and was next to Christ. I yeah, I believe. Like, that's not what happened. Do y'all understand Rome and how it worked? Like, you was in jail. You had been to trial. All this stuff had happened. And you think that the dude just showed up like, you know what? I just I just stole five boxes of chocolates and I'm on the cross next to you. That's not what happened. Yeah, forgive me, Lord. Like, he just was finished stealing and was right next to him. Like, that's not what happened at all. But that's how they make it seem in Christianity. Read that again. Where we at? Verse 41. Uh -huh. And we indeed justly, for we received the due reward of our deeds. Uh -huh. But this man have done nothing amiss. This dude ain't do nothing wrong. Meaning he had been aware of the acts that Christ had done. Word on the street is, he on point. He is with, read verse uh, 40. Verse 40. Uh -huh. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Doest not thou fear God? So this, he was able to, by him following Christ, he was able to say, this dude is a man of God. Because he was saying, he said to the dude, do you not fear God? Why would he say that to him if he didn't know that he was a man of God? Do you not fear God? You wouldn't say that about somebody that's obviously not following God. You wouldn't just say that about any random person. Come on. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation, Mm -hmm. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. Uh -huh. But this man have done nothing amiss. Go ahead. And he said unto Jesus, Lord. Stop. What did he call Jesus again? Lord. Why would he do that? Again, Christianity is crazy, man. To make sure you get it in your spirit. Mark 15, 32 says, those that were crucified with him reviled him. Do you know what that means? This means that both of these thieves joined in on the taunting and derision of Jesus. This means that both of the thieves mocked Jesus. But somewhere between 9 a.m. and noon, one of these thieves had a change of heart. I don't know what it was that led to this man's change of heart. And on this day, you realize there were three crosses. And scheduled for execution was not two thieves and Jesus. Scheduled for execution on this day was Barabbas and these two thieves. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Barabbas, many scholars believe, was the leader of this band. Barabbas was the leader, and these two thieves were the followers of Barabbas. And so this man has spent his life following the wrong crowd. This man has spent his life doing what some other man told him to do, found himself in trouble, and now he's hanging on the cross because he's been following the wrong crowd. 
to Hebrews chapter 11. You don't read about the dying thief. But who told him this was the son of God? What sermon did he hear preach? What did he see that made him to know that this was who he confessed him to be? But can I tell you, when you're in certain situations and God reveals himself, don't you let anything keep you from Jesus. And can I tell you, somebody up in the house this morning, that's why you're here today. Ain't nobody preached to you and told you to come here. Ain't nobody sent you no invitation and told you to. You're here because life has been happening. <laughs> Christianity is nuts. Not everyone saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But we know that this dude called him Lord, and what did Christ say to him? Come on, let's go back. We come right back to this. Just go to Luke. We come right back to Matthew. Read that what he just said. 42. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23, and verse 42. Uh -huh. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, uh -huh. remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Stop. Go back to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 again. This is the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Uh -huh. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But he that... But who? But he... So that man that was on the cross, him... That doeth the... That what? Doeth the, That doeth... So what did that man have to be doing that was on the cross next to him? He that doeth... The will of my father. The will of my father. What does that man... What does it mean that that man on the cross next to him was doing the will of his father? He had been keeping the commandments. Even though he was on the cross next to him. Read that again. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Uh -huh. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, uh -huh. but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So that's the only people that's going to be able to make it in. That's why I pre-referenced it with the fact that the Pharisees was wicked as hell. I didn't just go to that for no reason. Go back to me. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 42. Uh -huh. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. When thou comest into thy kingdom. Into thy kingdom. How? So he didn't call this man Lord and said that he got a kingdom. Again, what does it mean for that man? Is he's able to identify the fact that Christ has a kingdom? Give it to me, Matthew. No, John 3 and 3. This is the book of John, chapter 3 and verse 3. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. So not only was this man doing the commandments, but he was what? Born again. Born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't even identify the kingdom of God through Christ. It's impossible to do that. So that would mean that that man that was on the cross with Christ was a man that was doing the commandments and had repented. That's what it would mean. What, just some random cat? Go back to Luke. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 42. Yeah, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. So when you say when thou comest into thy kingdom, again, just for everybody's clarity in here, man, I don't want y'all to think that this dude was just out there just committing wickedness and then Christ was just like, come on in. That's not what happened. Come on. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Today will thou be with me in paradise. I mean, you're going to get in, bro. Even though your life before me was full of wickedness and you are reaping the just cause of that. Because you got to understand, like I said, we're wrong. It wasn't like the dude just showed up and they put him on the cross. Like, it was a trial. He, this dude could have possibly been in jail and all this different stuff. Some brothers learn about the truth in prison. That could have been this brother. He could have actually went through that, been in jail, learned about the truth, and then he would end up next to the dude. Like, oh, shoot, you the one that they was talking about. All right, roger that. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. 
Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.